Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. I am very excited to film this video today because I have a ginormous list of fragrance recommendations that you can get at Sephora because, baby, the VIB sale is coming up. I am very excited. I have my list going. I am ready to go. And I have done this video before. I'm gonna be mentioning new fragrances in this video. So if you're wondering like, hey, Anna, what about this perfume? I thought you loved it. I'm just trying to bring you something new. But if you want to see even more recommendations, if you haven't seen that video already, I will link it down below for your pure enjoyment. I would like to start <laughs> the first two being fragrances that I'm going to pick up during the sale. I cannot wait. The first one being Dead Cool's Red Dakota. I have tried a good handful of fragrances from Dead Cool. I purchased a bunch of samples myself and Red Dakota was the reigning champion. The only one I wanted a full bottle of. There were a couple that I thought were nice for sure, but this, oh my gosh, this is good. Red Dakota is so freaking unique. And you guys know I am so picky, so picky with citrus perfumes. They really, they usually don't wow me, but this is unlike anything I've ever smelled before. So we're gonna start out. The opening is a blast in your face of orange peel, but wait, 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 as it dries down, literally in minutes, that's where the magic happens. It becomes so intriguing, I could not stop smelling my arm. Wood, amber, and a gardenia that is not mature. You guys, I hate the note of gardenia, but Oh my gosh, this is good. Subtle exotic sweetness from wild berries. I was craving wearing this the next day and I couldn't because I blew through my sample in one day. I was absolutely hooked. I felt so cool wearing this. It has an edginess to it. Also layering winning combo of the year. Holy shit. Bath and Body Works, whipped berry meringue with Dead Cool's Red Dakota show stopping show mother if and stopping because we got a berry note in here and that just amplifies that exotic sweetness in red dakota and it's like creamy and sugary and delectable but with edge and i'm just like i was salivating absolutely salivating the other one that i will be adding to my collection is tom ford's noir extreme Parfum. This right here is my perfect version of the DNA. I love this line, both the men's and women's version, but there was something just in the background that smelled a little sour to me, and that part would bother me. It was very slight, but I could pick it up. Loved the rest of it though. This version, the Parfum version, doesn't have that. The Parfum version has more oomph. It's more cardamom, more woody. We still have that kulfi note, which if you don't know what that is, it's like a frozen cardamom pistachio dairy dessert. Oh, so yummy. I love a deep, sexy fragrance with a touch of a gourmand element. That is me up and down. Added suede leather tonka, so it is deeper, sexier, smoother. And that suede and leather is done to perfection. It is not dirty or animalic at all. It melds very nicely with the other notes. Super cozy, festive for fall and winter. Great for going out. Very confident and bold. Oh my gosh, it has such a character to it. Freaking love this. Ladies, if you are into the same kind of fragrances as me, do not be steered away that this is like marketed towards men. No, no, this is totally unisex. And you best believe that I will be rocking this fall and winter. Also, so will Eric. He loves this scent profile. Babes, I'm about to show you the best fragrances that you can get from Floral Street. Number one, or the first one I'm gonna mention, <laughs> rather, is Wild Vanilla Orchid. And if, Wilhelm Parfumeries, Poets of Berlin. Very popular, very hyped fragrance. I freaking adore it. It's one of my favorite fragrances ever. It's like a green vanilla blueberry, so unique, so good. This is a dupe. 
This is a dupe for like around, what, $85? There's no blueberry listed in Wild Vanilla Orchid, but I am telling you, it smells very fruity to me. That is the main thing that I get from this and Poesa Berlin is that blueberry note. We have vanilla, of course, and there is a definite green quality to the fragrance. We have cassis and bamboo in here, which I think is such a unique take on a green note in perfumery. It's very cool, very fun. It's not going to be for everyone because this is definitely a creative fragrance, but that is what I'm all about. I want to smell different. I want to smell unique, but I get mad compliments with this scent profile. People are like, oh my gosh, you smell so good. People always tell me I smell very fresh and fruity and unique. Like they do pick up on that green quality. So it almost has a little bit of like a Zen vibe. We have some sandalwood in the base, some exotic florals. Oh my gosh, this is so good. You know what? I'm a very proud older sister because I went to visit my family a couple months back and I brought Poets of Berlin with me. And my little sister, the youngest of the family, she's in high school, texted me recently telling me that she wanted a bottle of Poets of Berlin. And I was like, oh, I'm so proud. I am so proud. And I was like, you know what? Get this one because it's so much cheaper and it's literally a dupe. The only difference that I detect is that the green note is slightly different between the two fragrances. But oh my gosh, it is so fantastic. Wildly creative, insanely well done. I love this. The other one from Floral Street that I think you guys already know is coming up, unless you're new, is Arizona Bloom. Another one. That's very unique, but I find very likable. Oh my gosh, this is a mad compliment getter. Whenever I wear this, people are like, you smell so good. This is quite similar actually to Le Labo's Another 13, another very expensive fragrance, but with an added coconut note. So it is very summery, but this is not your basic summer perfume whatsoever. This smells sexy, like you're not trying to be sexy. It just has that, my skin smells incredible. Besides coconut, it has a very prominent musk and salt vibe giving like an ambergris quality of it, but it's very clean. We get a smooth cashmere wood as well. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely addicting. I will forever have this. This is fitting into the clean, fresh, aesthetic category, but it's very unique and very well done. And I find it quite addictive. It almost has a hint of this like sexy man's cologne undertone to it. Oh my gosh. For the men. The gentlemen, women too, if you're into this scent profile, but I definitely think this leans masculine. Tom Ford Eben Fume. This is sexy. Smoky, woody, masculine, warm, sexy. I actually grabbed this from my boyfriend's collection. I bought this for him. I bought a sample and I was like, this is so good, but feeling too masculine for me to wear. He fell in love with it, okay? This has a prominent Palisanto note and it is one of the truest Palisanto fragrances that I've smelled. They really just hit the nail on the head with this one. So you have to be into the note of Palisanto. Eric loves Palisanto, he burns it all the time. So it's a scent that he really resonates with and it feels like him. This is very dry, bold, resinous, ambery, smoky from the incense, some spiciness from the black pepper, a smooth leather. This smells like a man, like a rugged, sexy, masculine built outdoorsy man. <laughs> it smells so good. We have some more like aromatic notes, papyrus, cade oil, which is like a cousin to juniper. And it's not for the faint hearted. He actually wore this to an art show of his, just a couple sprays. And he was radiating this scent the whole night. So this scent is just like truly bottled masculinity <laughs> to me. I find it very sexy for like a confident man. And the energy that this gives me is definitely like tall, dark, and handsome 
not, you know, polished, clean, button down slacks kind of vibe. No, no, no. It's cool. It's outdoorsy. Another one from Tom Ford is Oud Wood. This one is going to fall more into your polished, clean, gentleman category. A little preppy, a businessman, okay? Eric loves this as well. He's been wearing it. And I find this to be a very likable version of some deeper wood notes. This is not a heavy, intense oud. We also have rosewood, sandalwood, vetiver. So that's the main thing dominating this fragrance. We have some nice, smooth spices, cardamom, Sichuan pepper. There's vanilla and tonka in here, but this is not a sweet fragrance, okay? Those are very, very quiet, but they're there just to smooth out the fragrance and keeping it from just being wood. I think it's very sexy. Clean, posh, we're here to do business. Next, I have several from Commodity to share with you. Commodity is now carried at Sephora, very exciting. I have three favorites and they're all in the expressive version. The first one being Commodity Milk. Listen, if you are into a marshmallow scent, this is it. Also, if you're not too much into lactonic scents, don't let the name milk deter you from trying this because it definitely kept me away from it for a while because I'm like, I'm 100% not going to like that. The milk note is not too loud, okay? It's actually more quiet, but it has a definite creamy quality to the fragrance. The main thing you are getting in here is marshmallows. So this is like cozy fall, winter, in a bottle, very gourmand, very nice, but what keeps it from being too, too overly sweet, even though this is definitely a sweet gourmand fragrance, is the mahogany wood in the dry down. So the longer this sits on your skin, the more that woody factor is going to amp up and it's, oh my gosh, such a beautiful balance of notes. We also have a very dominant tonka bean presence in this scent. So. Also, if you're not too much into woody scents, it stays being mainly marshmallow and tonka bean. So it's very fun, flirty, just cozy, yummy, sugary, delightful. That's a go-to that I recommend for girls that are into their sweet fragrances or younger girls. Like, it's a big hit. Next up, we have Book. I find this to be underrated within the commodity line. I hear everyone talking about, you know, velvet, gold, milk. People are sleeping on a book. If you are into fresh, natural, woody scents, this is the one to check out, okay? What makes this fragrance to me is the eucalyptus and cypress note. It gives it a very meditative, zen, calming, cooling feel to the fragrance. And I've said this many times before, but it's honestly the best way I can describe this. It's as if you are reading an old, delicious, hardcover book alone on the top of a mountainside. It's covered in like evergreen trees, a little bit of snow on the ground. It's an experience. It's mainly very woody, but it's not a harsh wood. It's very likable, very well done. Sandalwood, cedar, rosewood, and then a slight touch of a natural sweetness from the amorous amber, just giving that that little natural sweetness from the resins. It's a good one. The other favorite from Commodity is gold. If you like Byredo's G Water, you're gonna like this. This is quite similar, although this is a little louder on the vanilla and not as prominent with the juniper note. There's still a juniper in here giving it that fresh air feeling, but it's quieter. So dang pretty, so effortless. Chic pretty girl, a pretty girl in a bottle. And this is a beautiful, airy, likable vanilla. This is not the vanilla that's pulling gourmand, super sweet, super creamy, thick, anything like that. So if you're very picky about your vanilla fragrances, try this. A clean musk. And then I also get a predominant like pencil shaving sawdust quality from the sandalwood. It's very nice, creamy, and a translucent amber. So nothing too dense or heavy. It's very likable, but it's definitely giving it this warm, cozy feeling. Another perfume that you have to try if you're into that whole woody, outdoorsy feel is Ellis Brooklyn Apres. This is stunning. That 
touch of a saffron and vanilla is so yummy. I got a compliment wearing this to work the other day. A customer was like, okay, something smells really good over here. It was me, babe. It was me. It's always me. This is giving you all of the cozy cottage vibes in the snow. You are going with your family, your loved ones on a skiing trip. You're staying in a very gorgeous log cabin. You are smelling the cold, crisp feeling of the snow. You can smell the juniper berries on side, the trees. Someone's just poured a glass of whiskey. It's very smooth though and not too strong. So if you're not into boozy scents, don't be afraid of this. A smooth suede and the wood note that I get the most is cedar. There's also guyac wood, sandalwood. It is just delightful. It is truly an experience. It's very transportive and it is the best scent from Ellis Brooklyn. Definitely one of their most creative. It is a hit. If you want a perfume that captures the essence of the outdoors, but it fully completely smells like a perfume and it's gorgeous. Like it's not smelling like, you know, you've just been running around outside for hours. It's transportive, it sets the scene, but it smells like it's meant to be worn. It smells gorgeous. I'm a replica, babe. Coffee Break, I highly recommend Coffee Break. Also Jazz Club, but I featured that in my last video, Sephora recommendations video. So we're gonna highlight this baby today. So if you're wondering, you're like, girl, isn't that your favorite? Yeah. Another very transportive scent. Oh my gosh. This is so dang cozy. This smells like being in a darling hipster coffee shop. Like it is so dang cute. And they have just served you a vanilla lavender latte. They're very cool. It's the thing right now. This is the perfect blend of all of these notes. If you are not into predominantly strong coffee fragrances, do not let the name Coffee Break deter you from trying this because this is not a dark, intense, you know, like roasted coffee beans in your face. You definitely get the cozy gourmand experience of coffee, but you have other supporting notes that level it out and that are equal players with the coffee. The lavender, it's not too harsh or aromatic, but gives you that cool touch. Vanilla and tonka bean to sweeten it up, and then you have a milk note. It's not too much, but it definitely gives us such a cozy, creamy, calming vibe to the scent. So those are the main things that I get. I love that this has definitely that gourmand element to it, but it's not 100% smelling like food. It has those other notes to switch it up. It is a vibe and I'm absolutely aching to wear this this fall. It's still hot in California, but I bought the travel spray of this and I couldn't get it out of my head. It was so good. Juliet has a gun, sunny side up. This is one of those fragrances that is a lifer for me that, you know, I have so many hardcore <laughs> passionate loves. I couldn't fit them all into my for life video, but this is definitely one of them. Are you kidding me? Wood, vanilla, coconut, musk, like hello, hello. It is powdery. It is creamy. It is giving you the pretty girl, clean girl aesthetic. It is understated, but this baby lasts. It has ISOE super, so it sticks to your skin like a champ. This fragrance, like you can go to town, you can over spray, and it's never gonna be overwhelming, too heavy, too much. So the actual scent profile is soft, it's dainty, but it will stick around. I can't even express how much I love this. I've gone through like a third of the bottle already. It's just the perfect amount of everything. It's It has this like light, amount of sweetness, but it's not too sweet. It's powdery, it's creamy. It's woody and musky, but not too much. The coconut, done to perfection. It's not like artificial or too sweet. Suntan lotion, no, it, oh my gosh. It's just delightful and by far the best. Juliet has a gun fragrance in my opinion, I, wow. And I think it's so underrated, like I do not hear many people talking about this one at all. Try it and thank me later because the people who have tried it got back to me and they're like, 
That is so good. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's what I keep telling you, babes. Another one from Juliet has a gun. Magnolia Bliss. If you are familiar with the Chloe Nomad range and you like those, you're gonna like Magnolia Bliss because it definitely has that oak moss citrus vibe to it. This has a very crisp, girly, carefree, put together, clean, perfumey vibe. That was a lot of adjectives. <laughs> but hello, I'm trying to describe a scent here just through words. This is very, very likable. You guys, I'm not kidding. This has got to be one of my most complimented scents. When I wear this to work, I have multiple people that day telling me I smell so good. This is a very, very crowd pleasing scent. This isn't going to be like, wow, this is so unique and so different. This is just gonna fall into that really pretty category. It's pretty, it's likable, fresh, clean, very crisp, modern white florals. This suits an enormous age range. This will smell fantastic on someone very young and also someone older. It just, oh my gosh, because it has this young, sparkling, uplifting vibe to it, and yet it definitely has a classiness as well. A juicy, crisp nectarine. It's not sugary, it's not like oozing with fruit. It's like a crunchy crisp. It's like a crunchy crisp. A nice zing of ginger, a clean musk. It definitely has a predominant citrus presence as well from the bergamot and lemon. Very nice. And if you want this to last longer, an amazing combo is Bath & Body Works Gingham. Body cream, body lotion with this, incredible. Another fragrance that is a must have for all the clean girlies, Skylar Salt Air. There, listen, there's no coconut water listed, but boy oh boy do I get it. Very refreshing, crisp, cooling coconut water. It smells incredibly clean, fresh, white linens, a touch of sea salt that makes it so addictive and intriguing. I feel like sea salt just does something magic on the skin. When you have a little bit of a light understated sweetness and some salt, oh, some driftwood. So it's definitely giving you this airy beachy experience, but it's like the cleanest beachy scent you could possibly wear. It doesn't smell suntan lotion at all. It has a little bit of a citrus from bergamot. I feel effortlessly pretty and chic with Salt Air. It is gorgeous and I will continuously and continuously repurchase this. So those are my picks for the Sephora VIB sale. Let me know what are you gonna get. What are you hauling? I would love to know. Also, like I said, be sure to check out my video from prior if you want even more recommendations. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.